Jeff Greenberg. I'd like to talk to you a little bit about ripple trimming. And in a lot of ways, I feel that editorial tools are made and broken in the concepts of a ripple trim. We want to talk about ripple trimming on the timeline, but we want to pay particular close attention to the trim edit mode in the program monitor. Let's start with just the single standard ripple tool. That ripple tool here is letter B, and I like to think of it as bringing the timeline with me. And a perfect example might be here in the sequence. I'm just going to zoom in a little bit. Is that if I want to shorten or lengthen this clip, I can click and drag, and it brings the timeline with me. It shortens the rest of the timeline. If I lengthen it, and you can see up in the program monitor, you get two screens, the outgoing side on the left and the incoming, and you can see the key, the, the actual time code numbers on the left are changing as I move this left and right. We can use also the arrow keys, and that's going to be on the Macintosh option and arrow to move them left and right. On a PC, it's control and arrow, and add in the shift key on your respective systems for five. Now, this is really nice and allows you to edit pretty precisely, but there are a lot of times where we need to actually see both sides of the edit. And for this, I'm just going to double click here, and you can see this opens it up in this trim edit mode in the program monitor. I want you to see there's another way to get into this. I'm going to just go up and down my timeline. I'm going to tap the letter T, and it brings me into it. Notice when I hit it this time, since I just had the edit, I was on the edit, it gave me the roll let both left and right, I can just come up and click on the left side or the right side to make it a ripple trim. And the beauty here is the same keys work. That would be option shift left and right arrows on the PC, control shift left and right arrows to trim the outgoing side or click on the incoming side. And a perfect use for this is to clean up uh, somebody's interview so it's a good radio edit or to add or lengthen an action that somebody does. Notice that there are also buttons up here for five frames to the left and five frames to the right, as well as one to the right and one minus one to the left. I don't really say plus and minus. I say to the left and to the right. It's much easier to think of when you deal with it. And if you have a numerical keypad, which I don't have on this laptop, I can type plus and minus number. Other things that you should know is Control T on the Macintosh. Shift T on the PC, switch between the different modes here. That's the standard trim edit in red. Look at the timeline. Standard trim edit, a roll edit, and a ripple trim, which is what we are most concerned about. Last, up here with a ripple trim setup, I can use the JKL keys to trim and edit simultaneously. I want this to be in a ripple trim before I get there, though. So I'm just going to hit Control T, Shift T on the PC until it's yellow. There, that's set up. And the beauty here is that I can play backwards when I type the letter K using J. When I tap the letter K, it makes the edit. Same thing with L. Let's see how that works. Play it backwards. K key pause, it makes the edit. Let's try it again forward, L key. In space time, that's never going to go away, right? My death is just the end of the little spaghetti string. K key pause and it makes the edit. This is fantastic for listening to an inter interview and playing it simultaneously or in action. And, and these sort of trims really sit back and allow you to do more than just blading and removing or pushing everything out and adjusting. This is really how you should trim. When we do this on multiple tracks, there's one little footnote here that Premiere Pro has these sync locks. Now, I'm going to do this on the timeline here. When I click here in the audio and I go ahead, or in the video, and I shorten this clip, you'll notice it brings the other tracks with it, and that's because of sync locks. Now, I'm going to turn off the sync lock on the highest track on V2. When I push this later in time, it's not going to move those elements. It's not going to keep them locked to sync. I just did an undo. I'd like you to see that with the audio as well. I'll go ahead here, take this edit, and I will shorten this edit and you'll see everything comes up except for those higher tracks and lower tracks, the ones without the sync locks. To turn sync locks on and off for one track, you can click here. If you hold down the shift key, it does them all simultaneously. Of course, probably you want sync locks on because if there was a relationship between this B-roll and this interview or this guitar sound and this interview, you would have lost that sort of relationship because they were off. So you probably want them on all the time, but now at the very least you understand how they work.